Hi there. During the month of March, we'll be taking a look at supply chains. We'll also be unpacking how ecosystem thinking can help us better understand, manage, and build supply chains that are better suited for the future. A lot has changed over the last 12 months, and I don't need to tell you how much businesses have been affected. But here are some thoughts around how we can better use supply chains and how we can use ecosystem, ecosystem thinking to connect directly with the consumers that we seek to serve. In starting thinking about this, where I sort of started was identifying the needs, dreams and desires of consumers. And it's quite fascinating when you start thinking about these types of ideas, you start paying attention to different things that you hear. This morning, while listening to a clubhouse room that was focused on discussing ideas around startups, one of the panelists said a phrase that really stood out for me. And I'm paraphrasing a bit here, but it went something like this. Identify desires and use modern technologies to solve them. I found this extremely powerful because in thinking about that, you are then taking a step back and you're saying, what are the actual needs, dreams and desires of your customers and how can you use the tools that we have available to solve them? I'm not going to bore you and talk about what is a supply chain or what is supply chain management because those are easy terms that you can pop into Google, this wonderful thing called search, and really go and deep dive into some of the topics and the thinking behind them. But as a starting point, it, might, it may be worthwhile for us to consider what is actually a supply chain. In its simplest form, a supply chain is the activities required by an organization to deliver goods and services to the consumer. Now, over the last 14 months, that has shifted significantly. A lot of businesses have been forced to go direct to consumer. Business models like Amazon have seen dramatic growth. And right around the world, consumers have changed their shopping habits. In previous videos, one of the other co-founders of the XYZ Playground and I discussed how consumers have become accustomed to different things and what the new normal or the old normal looked like and what the new normal looks like. And I think that what we've become accustomed to as consumers is definitely something that we need to consider in our thinking about supply chains. So when I personally start thinking about supply chains, I sort of itemize the things that I would like to, to think through. And there's certain lessons that I've used from digital products and digital models that I use in my supply chain thinking. So here they are. Identification and teaching the algorithm. Two businesses that stand out when thinking about this. First is Spotify and Netflix. If you think about the way that they identify the needs, dreams and desires of a customer, they ask you as the consumer to identify those when you sign up for their platforms. And then they serve you specific content based on those methods and those selections that you've made while signing up. Secondly, access. Mo mobile devices and connected experiences. Too often when I think we think about supply chains is that we just think about moving from A to B or how do we move goods from A to B. We don't necessarily understand where we are meeting the consumer and how that can influence the supply chain. For example, do we need big DC hubs right around the world or can we use much more micro thinking and develop smaller DC hubs that are supporting local supply chains and local resources inside of those spaces, which then is quite interesting and something that we'll look to unpack going forward around sustainability. Thirdly, communication and expectation. Like I've already mentioned, consumers have become accustomed to certain things over the last 14 months, specifically when we refer to digital experiences and digital devices. For example, ask yourself, if you, if you could ever imagine, two years ago, had someone said to you, would you imagine doing all of your grocery shopping online? Sure, there may be some people in the world that would have been ahead of the curve and already been doing that, but the large majority would not have, especially where I live in the developing world. Lastly, feedback loops and learning. This is sort of where it gets really exciting and you start to tie in ecosystem thinking. In nature, nature learns from feedback. And there's certain feedback loops that keep informing and allow plants and nature to evolve in certain ways. One of the things when we build supply chains is that we need to think about how we can install feedback loops inside of the supply chain so that we can optimize different things, remove pieces that aren't working, and also replace technologies with newer technologies so that we can increase efficiencies and better services through, through the supply chain. So that's just four, four points that I use in my supply chain thinking. If you're keen to reach out and learn more about the supply chain and what we, how we use ecosystem, ecosystem thinking rather to understand the supply chain, please feel free, feel free to reach out and connect with us. To, to the young thinkers out there, if you're keen to learn more about reverse mentorship, head over to the xyzplayground.com. To the executives, 
if you want to learn more about the, our way of thinking, the canvases and the playground that we're creating in order to enable you to think, test and experiment inside, please also reach out to, to Jens or myself on LinkedIn or via our website. So this has just been the start. There's loads to unpack around supply chains and around ecosystems. A fascinating, two fascinating concepts that are rather intertwined when you think deeply about them. Have a great day further. Ciao.